Hello, I'm Mark Weisheimer. I am here with the Volt uh, Chevrolet Volt coolant heater made by Eber Spotcher. And I, uh, or, or Eber, how the hell you say their name. At any rate, uh, I'm going to be uh, going through how we do some of the things we do when we are setting up to see how we can control this via CAN. This model from the Chevrolet Volt is a uh, single wire can controlled and I'm using the can Dewey from EVTV that uh, Paulo has designed uh, it's a little modified this one has a single wire can transceiver uh, hacked into it and uh, then on this setup we've got ooh, ouch that's hot <laughs> uh, in fact let's see how hot that is we've got the heater running we've got a Pierberg uh, CWA 50 pump I've got a little bit of Plumbing here, a 12 volt supply, a 395 volt uh, better place pack, a JLD 404 that I'm recording on a different camera. I'm trying to do some screen capture at the same time. This is a little radiator from a garden tractor, a Honda garden tractor. It was a two cylinder, 13 horsepower. It's about twice the size of a normal um, heater heater core at 164 degrees now I do not have the fan 175 degrees uh, that's pretty hot no wonder it felt so hot let me uh, let me turn the fan on here and I'm gonna get a little heat cuz I I can feel oh man that is nice uh, I am not able to get full heat full time so you can see in the side camera that on the JLD 404, which are on five amps right now, six, it's, it's kind of all over the map. And uh, this thing still puts out quite a lot of heat. Add it, that's nice. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having that in my regular car. Let's see here, we're, okay, we're down to 144 degrees on the heat there. Uh, and I'm just measuring the temperature of the body. This is a metal body radiator and uh, so it's easy to measure the temperature that way. The Chevy Volt heater has inside of it uh, an NTC 10K uh, thermistor that we could uh, connect to the, to probably to the JLD 505. This, this is going to be one that uh, the JLD 505 is probably going to be the uh, weapon of choice on because then we can read the temperature of the coolant apparently this can't measure its own temperature any other way than through that thermistor so we'll we'll do the same thing as we go along I, I'm not doing anything with the thermistor today and we're not going to really get too in depth other than the fact that it does come with one so we're going to use it at some point um, it doesn't take much it takes the high voltage in uh, this is this is some cabling uh, that's a, that's the normal connector that comes with it I have an extension cable coming over to my DC junction box and then it requires 12 volts uh, like you know 12 volt car battery and then a single wire can and can do is great for for working with that we're going to use the can do today to look at it and we'll talk a little bit about how we get to where we're at and and what we are going to look for and what we're going to try to do um, carrie manning made a capture from a 2013 Chevrolet Volt in what's called the preheat mode. And that's where the car's closed up, you're going to go somewhere in a little bit and you want to preheat the cabin. So you can put it in preheat mode. And he did that, got about a 30 second capture. It's about 10,000 lines of data and uh, it's stuff full of data. So there's, there's a lot to slosh through. This thing, this capture has 145 or 148 different messages in it. A couple of them we know come from the heater itself. I can identify at least two that come from the heater itself. And then uh, a couple of them are unrelated, have nothing to do with it. And the rest of them are telling it how, how much power to, to, uh, produce, to produce the heat. So, so with this, um, you can probably see on the, on the ammeter, this thing's kind of going up and down. 15, about 15 or 16 amps is a full six kilowatts. So we we barely hit. I think we hit 12 at some point during our our playback of the capture. I have GV Ret 
PC running on my laptop. I'm capturing that. I've got GVRET loaded onto the CAN DUI, and that's been modified for single wire CAN. I'm using the, the CAN1 channel, and, and Colin's written a little bit of software to allow us to uh, put this in high voltage wake up mode on address 0 by 100, 0x100. Zero that's the hex address for the wake up signaling on single wire CAN in the GM LAN system. So we've, we've got that built in. Um, it works really well. And GV Rep PC works quite well for going back through and looking at it. On the screen, I have a whole list of the IDs of the messages that are in this capture. It starts at the top with 0 by 100. That's only required once. It, once it's sent one time, we can uncheck it. It'll continue to run and do everything it needs. 13FF E097 is the next address. That actually happens to be generated by the heater, so we can uh, we can uncheck that. The heater, if you turn it on by itself with 12 volt auxiliary, will send once per second at 33.3 kilobits the message 13FF E097. And basically, I think that's a I'm on a live signal, just just telling the rest of the system it's there. I think basically there's about a half a dozen or something in that it's half a dozen to a dozen 13 ff messages i think most of them are uh, other devices zero uh, x 621 is the keep alive signaling on single wire can and it's repeated quite frequently uh, the rest of the messages i think are basically uh, a, a number of them are going to be which groups of elements in the heater at what power level it has basically inside there four modules that it can command on and off. Three of them it commands on and off. The fourth one, it can command a level between zero and uh, like 750 watts. So for anything that's zero to 750 watts, it picks the level in between. Uh, 750 and above, it picks a group that is equal to 750, and then 1500 and then 3000. So if you want 4500, it turns on the 3000 watt and the 1500 watt together so you've got 4500 watts of heat uh, and then the rest of it it brings up as it's needed to uh, fill in to the top number um, we can go through with gv ret and we can select and deselect these messages that we're going to send just using the straight capture that maybe somebody's provided us just like this that's really handy uh, we can do a couple things like we can select the playback speed in microseconds. I've got it set to 4,000 microseconds. That's a four millisecond pause for uh, characters. And that seems to be just about, when I put it at that, that seems to play back at just about the rate that I think it was recorded at. It, it's close. Uh, and then we've picked which CAN bus we're going to send it to. We're using CAN bus 1 on this modified system. And... That is, that's what we can do with this from this program. We can take away these messages. We can add to these messages. I'm gonna go take this. I, I commented that I didn't think the 13FF messages are used. I'm just gonna start dialing them out by unchecking them on the screen here. And I've got a couple others, 1047, um, there's a 1047 message. I think the 2FC0CB I think that is, uh, or the 2F40CB is the actual, I think that's the shutdown, shutoff uh, command. Because the way Kerry recorded this, he recorded it in preheat mode for 30 seconds and then issued the shutoff command. That only appears once at about the, at about the 30 second point in the recording. So I'm going to turn that one off. Um, and let me see if I can find some more 13s. And let's see how, just watch the amp meter, and let's see if we're seeing a whole bunch of differences yet. I don't see any amp meter, so maybe I killed the whole blasted thing. Ah, here it comes back. It goes in waves like this because it's, it's, um, it's, not, it's not on all the time. That's one of my frustrations that it's not all there. But, you know, again, that's part of what we're going to try to suce out here is what, what's the command that tells it which level of heating to generate. And I took the 13s out and I took the two and 
we're still in we're still seeing 10 and 12 amps which is about what we do um, we're still generating quite a bit of heat we're, we've cooled down because I've been running the fan I have a giant fan on this thing and uh, see what we're at at this point you know we've we've come down to about 90 degrees on that now and it, and it is cooler and it's easy also to go in here and put them all back in so I just click all and and they're all going to be sent let's see if that brings our, our heat level up we'll measure the temperature here in just a minute or so and we'll watch the amperage I see right there we're already hitting 12 again uh, we seem to be staying on consistent current output again and Part of what this problem is, is that it does shut down the current. Uh, it seems like if you count the messages, this has got 10,000 lines of messages, it seems like at about 2,000 it starts generating some heat, and it seems like at about 8,000 it stops. So we have probably we could probably take the first 2,000 out and the, and the last 2,000 out and uh, maybe have a little more consistent heat. Let me, uh, I take, I just use a, an editor like Notepad++. I leave in the 0x100, and I leave in the 621C Keep Alives, and I leave, there's a 62C, which might have something to do with, with a Keep Alive. I, I'm not sure on that one yet, so I'm gonna leave it in. Let me go, let me go get a different file. I've, I've taken one and I've trimmed that out, and uh, the way we change that is we go to Load From File, Actually, I'm going to stop our, well, before I do that, let's see if we came up any just by, uh, no, not really, not any warmer. Uh, let's go over and load from another file that I've trimmed these out. On the screen, you're going to see that I have uh, 2013 volt preheat. I've got a copy and I've got modifieds. These are different ones where I've trimmed the size. And you can see over here, the smallest one, number five, Let's use it because I've trimmed it the most, and guess what? It it puts out the most heat. So, uh, what I basically did was watch to see when I was getting current and when I and that's all I've done. I have not sused the command structure. I've just looked at the capture that I have. When is it doing the work that I want to do? And and I've just chopped some things in and out of there. So I'm going to pick back up with that one, and let's see if we run any more consistent on the heat. Uh, we, I've probably got it in sleep mode right now, so we'll have to wait for it to come back around and kick off the 0x100 wake up message, which will, should occur right there. But I don't see any current, so did I leave the 0x100 in there? <laughs> Might have it chopped out. No, it's there. Okay, let's see what we get. We're still in can one. Let's do this. Let's there we go speed up the messages a little bit double double the rate right there. I'm gonna go to 3,000 and here we're hanging in at the 6 to 9 amp range more consistently and uh, let's just watch it out we loop this one over and over so we, we go to the end and start back at the beginning and I know on this one still even at the beginning it it cuts down a little bit but we're running about a third power pretty consistently here and we go up to about two-thirds power at different portions of it. There it's shut off entirely based on our ammeter. We're, we are picking up some more heat. And I'm going to unplug our fan because it's noisy. And, and just talk a little bit again about what we see with this. Um, it's, we're back, like I said, we, we do run more consistent longer heat with those things trimmed out. And this is Again, this is the original can capture with the beginnings and the ends trimmed out. I, I think if you actually look at the data that's in there, I, I can see a rolling counter that occurs. I can also see that the data fields have far more data at the times that it's on. I can see a group of numbers like the 102. Um, I, I took a look at some of the 1022 numbers and 1020 numbers, and they were they had way more data packed in the fields when it was generating heat. So what I'm going to do at some point is now I'm going to take those data fields and I'm going to see if I can see how it's building those numbers into power levels 
and I'm going to start generating my own and and see what what do we need to generate so that we can get full output power because it would sure be nice and we're starting to warm up quite nicely here it sure would be nice to uh, be able to command this thing to full heat all the time 6kw would be incredible it would it would really be a warm car uh, it you know take the battery down but on some of the cold winter days we had this year uh, it would be worth it during the drive time it would be even better to do that in a preheat mode where we would either set up JevQ or Kandui or JLD505 to generate a, a lengthy enough preheat while it's plugged into the charger because it, depending on what our charger is capable of and what our what our EVSC is capable of we could bring the power in through that during the time and not diminish as much on the drive by doing that so we preheat the car and then when we go out we're unplugging and before we actually head out but the car is basically warm when we get in it a fully charged battery and and then we have all the heat we want while we're driving and we're just limited once again by the by the battery kilowatt hour capability but you're, you always are anyway so this should be pretty cool stay with us we're going to get some more numbers as far as what those data fields do and and how do we build those structures on our own to do what we want and have it doing our bidding as as we choose and and that's the next stage and the next step uh, you, you always got to get to this point it's always a pain in the butt to find something to use as a heat exchanger and a pump and a you don't have the thing leaking all over the floor and it's not freezing on you when you walk away from it and boy we're getting some heat now so uh, it's wow nice and warm that's fantastic and we're back to you know I'd say we're back to 150 degrees or so we're back to 148 degrees so uh, it if we could if we could keep this thing at at the four or five kilowatt level steady that would keep that temperature even with that big honking fan on it and you're going to use a smaller heater core than that that is much larger than this is about 12 by 11 by 7 8 inch thick it isn't it is a copper uh, radiator with a copper body so it it dissipates some serious heat um, and, and more than more than you would see in a heater core a heat, a heater course half that size or or maybe even a little less and that's what you heat your car with with the internal combustion engine already so we'll come back at it as we have more data as we as we broken down the data structure a little bit more but this is a process that we use to get there and it's it, you know if you have an interest in doing this please uh, please contact Jack and tell him you're interested and uh, join our group we'd love to have you take care